According to 365 Data Science, who surveyed a thousand LinkedIn job profiles for data science roles, found that 60% of them required SQL. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that SQL is a language you need to know if you want to become a data scientist. And in this video, I plan to go over all the SQL knowledge you need in order to land that entry level data science role. Let's get into it. So to start with, I recommend you gain an understanding of what are relational databases and also what is SQL. Also try to gain some sort of intuition behind what are the different SQL flavors. Obviously you don't need to know exactly how each SQL flavor works and all the syntax behind them, but just know why there's different flavors and what are the main differences between them. Based on my experience, I recommend you learn either MySQL or PostgreSQL. However, a lot of them are very similar in syntax and the basic functions are pretty much the same. So once you know one SQL flavor, another is pretty much easy to learn. After you've understood what are relational databases and what is the goal of SQL, now it's time to learn the basic commands. And to be honest, these basic commands I'm gonna list for you, I pretty much use them 95% of the time when I'm carrying out SQL. They're very useful to do those basic data transformations that you may need in order to do analysis or build those machine learning data sets, like I said. I often do my more sophisticated and complex transformations in Python, only because they're easier to unit test and do integration tests with, so it makes the code more robust. Anyway, I digress. So the main basic commands I think you should know are select start from, it's the classic SQL command. You should be very comfortable doing this. After that, I recommend learning things like alter, create, update, which are just all the things about creating and managing data tables. Then I'll move on to filtering. So things like having, where, and, or things that will filter your data frame table based on some sort of condition. Then I'll move on to anything related to date and time. So date add, date diff, date sub, just how you manipulate date variables. Then there's two other really common commands you should know, group by and order by. Pretty much use them every single day or whenever I'm doing a SQL query. So you should definitely learn these. Then I'll move on to learning case. Case is like the similar version of if, else and Python. It's just a conditional statement. Uh, and again, it's very powerful to know. After that, I'll move on to aggregation. So things like average, max, min, mode, anything that aggregates data into a single statistic is very useful. And finally, I would end with learning joins. So all the types of joins like outer join, full join, left join, right join, inner join, you get the point, just any form of join. Now joins are probably the hardest part to fully grasp. And to this day, I still make mistakes when joining two tables together. I remember in my first job, I actually made a quite big error where I did some analysis for stakeholders, but the results I gave was incorrect because I joined the two tables incorrectly together. So don't be like me when you're studying for joins, make sure you really understand them and gain that intuition behind them because they're really easy to go wrong, but they're incredibly powerful. Once you've learned those basic functions, I really recommend if you have the time to learn some of these more advanced ones I'm going to list. I use these quite frequently, particularly when dealing with big data, because SQL is a lot more optimized for doing big data queries than it is doing the same ones in Python. And SQL Warehouse is just more efficient than doing it in Pandas. So if you're dealing with big data sets, these functions could come in really handy for you to minimize how long you're waiting for to get that data. The first advanced topics I recommend you learn would be common expression tables and subqueries. These are so powerful and I use them quite a bit, like I said, when building my big data sets because SQL is so much more efficient than it is in Python. Then I would learn window functions like row number, rank, dense rank. These also come incredibly in handy and I really recommend you invest some time in learning these. And finally, I would learn things like temporary functions, use define functions, just any form of functions that make your code or SQL query a lot nicer to read and use. Now, of course, there is so much more to learn in SQL, but those basic and advanced functions I just gave should cover you for pretty much any entry-level data science interview that you may have. Regarding resources, when I started to learn SQL, I personally took the W3Schools and Tutorials Point courses. They're completely free 
and they're all online and they pretty much cover all the basic syntax you need to know along with exercise problems. So I really recommend those if you're just starting out and looking for a completely free resource. Another platform that I've been using quite a bit recently is LearnSQL.com who are kindly sponsoring this video. They have over 65 interactive SQL courses on the website over a range of SQL flavors like Standard SQL, MySQL and PostgreSQL. What I really appreciate is that each course is focused on hands-on exercises and is completely web-based. I really like how every problem is very business focused and is very similar to the types of problems I solve in my day-to-day -day role. Even though I'm not a complete beginner, LearnSQL has this initial skill assessment test that you can take, which basically ranks your SQL level. And from there, they can recommend you course and content that is best suited to your level and also areas where you're struggling upon the most. So it's very useful even if you're an expert or beginner. However, if you are a beginner, then I recommend this SQL from A to Z track. It covers all the content I just mentioned earlier in this video, and it's the SQL course I would have taken if I was learning SQL again. And you can start today completely for free using Learn SQL's free trial, which requires no credit card information. If that sounds interesting, then I'll link it in the description below for you to check out. After those courses, if you want to practice your SQL skills, then I recommend you either use LeetCode or HackerRank. I personally took around 50 hacker rank problems before I felt comfortable in answering those entry level data science interview problems. However, for you, this may be more or less. So don't really focus too much on a number, just focus when you're doing the problems on gaining understanding and building intuition behind SQL. The main bit of advice I would give is that firstly, don't worry too much on trying to find the best or right course. Such a thing doesn't exist, so just find a course that you like like the Learn SQL one and just start. Secondly, make sure you practice daily. The 10,000 hour rule applies here as it does with pretty much everything else. And finally, you have to have patience. You can't master SQL in just a couple of days, but you can learn it to a decent level in a few weeks so that you can pass those entry level data science interviews, which is exactly what I did. And I'll link here a video which explains my whole SQL journey in case you're interested. If you want to know more about data science and data science tips, then make sure you subscribe to my newsletter, Dishing the Data. I send it every Monday morning and it's all about my thoughts and experiences as a practicing data scientist. If that sounds interesting, then I'll link in the description below for you to check out. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you click the like and subscribe button. And I'll see you next time.